Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor tutorials and this video is all about our Let's Make Art Matter for June. If you don't know what our, oh, I'm sorry, Keenan's also here. I am here, yes, in the background. I have meats and cheese. <laughs> Literally, physically here. I was gonna like really focus on not laughing my sorry. way through this tutorial and like right away I failed. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, so our Let's Make Art Matter, if you're not familiar, is we have a watercolor subscription box, and in every box we include a pre-stamped and usually pre-addressed watercolor postcard. This month we decided to stamp it but not address it because we wanted to honor Father's Day. Um, so we want you guys to take a moment and think of something to paint for. You can do it for Father in honor of Father's Day, but we also acknowledge that not everybody has fathers to send this to. So maybe it's just someone in your life who's important to you that you want to say, I love you, I'm thinking about you, I just wanted to let you know that you're special. Like that's really what this is all about. So. Um, you can paint whatever you want on the postcards, but sometimes it's hard to come up with ideas. So we provide tutorials in case you don't know what you want to paint. And so today we are doing a daytime camping scene, which I thought would go nice with our nighttime camping scene, which is one of our projects. So it's, um, I just thought it'd be fun. Uh, the colors we are using are just the colors in the subscription box. You are free to use whatever colors you want. Again, this is your postcard, so you guys can do whatever you want. This is just to help you out in case you don't know what to paint. Um, let's do an oath before this one. Okay. You can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. That was a nice soft one. Um, with this project, we're gonna do a little bit of sketching. And I know that sometimes when we see a watercolor postcard, if we're sending it, we think, nobody's gonna want a postcard for me if I just started painting. Like, what if it turns out bad? And I can tell you, and this is one thing for sure, when we do this, it's not about how amazing we can make a, a postcard look or how talented you are as a painter and share it. It's more about letting someone know that you care about them. That's really all this is about. So it's not about mailing a postcard, it's about connecting with someone that you know or maybe not know, because usually our people that are in the boxes that we send postcards to, we all send them to the same one and it's usually people we don't know. And I think our goal here is to show that we're powerful as a community and art can really make a difference. It's a really easy way to, to take a moment and paint something and let someone know that you care about them and you love them. Because sometimes the right words are really hard to find. So it's a really simple way of saying like, I just, I wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you. And as someone who has received postcards um, from some people in our wonderful community, it truly, I've saved them all. And it's not about if they're the perfect painting, it's that I feel so loved that someone took the time to send something to me. And that's what we're trying to do here together as a community. So don't get stressed out about this being perfect. That is not the goal. So um, I have my pencil here because we're going to do just a little bit of light sketching. It's basic shape. So if you've never drawn before, don't stress out. You guys can do this. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start with my, um, like my water. So. And whenever you're sketching, if you're not used to drawing, you usually want to press lightly um, when you're drawing because then you can easily erase or adjust things. If you like go at it really hard drawing, then like lines are like in there and it's a lot harder to correct mistakes. So I'm more of a sketcher by nature, which means I like to do light multiple lines. I'm the same way. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> But some people, like I feel like Alexis, who works for us, she is definitely, she's like a line drawer with that like a girl marker. Can draw. She's extremely talented. Yes. And like I really, I love seeing her work because it's very different from how I do it, where she's very much like, I'm just going to do this in black marker and black ink. And it like turns out, and I'm like, you are amazing. She really is. So, anyways. Okay, so I'm going to um, kind of come in on the bottom corner. Have a line coming out, and then I'm going to have it go back in. And you can see, like, this is kind of a wavy line, okay? 
And you can see also here that I don't care if this looks messed up. I'm gonna do this over and over again because I want you guys to kind of like get comfortable with just making a mark on your paper with a pencil. And then um, it's gonna kind of like come off here. I thought okay. of who else you could send this to. Who? Um, any gentlemen that are deployed. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'm sure that there are probably causes that have like mailing addresses oh, yeah. where you can send postcards. You can always find one. Yeah. Also, um, maybe like a retirement communities. Yep. And what are those? Uh, I feel like there's another name for the homes that people live in besides retirement communities because that's not the same thing. Okay. Assisted living facilities? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's always someone that could use a little bit of love. So um, here's our water line right there. And then um, I'm going to put in my tent. Now for our tent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it small, but if you guys want to make it bigger, you totally can. Um, I'm just going to do a triangle here. Okay. So that's the opening of my tent. Are we on the close up for this? You're adjusting that? I forgot we moved. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to give you a second to move it back. Good. Okay. So here is the opening of my tent. It's just a triangle. Okay. And then from the triangle, from this top corner, I'm going to go at a slight angle to do the side of the tent. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Now to try and get your perspective right, usually this angle and this angle is the same. So if I were to try and make the bottom of my tent like do this, and I hit that line, that feels off a little bit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I try and mirror these angles. Again, this is a general rule. It's not a hard and fast rule. So if you have like a reference photo, you can go off what's happening in the reference photo, but this is just a general rule I use. And then usually this back angle is the same angle that's right here. So boop, boop, okay? And there we have a little tent. I love that. Um, and then I put in some like soft sloping hills. So I have one kind of coming down this way and I have one coming here and then I have one coming up here. You guys, of course, can adjust this. We also have an outline with our nighttime camping scene that has like trees. So maybe you just kind of like want to crop this and square it up. You absolutely can do that. Okay, so now that I have this sketched out, I'm ready to paint. So I'm going to start with the sky. And I'm going to use my round six. I'm going to get it wet, hit it off the side of my cup so it's not dripping. And I'm going to grab a little bit sea blue. And you can see my palette's already dirty because I'm using all, pretty much all of the colors from our tutorials. And you guys can use, you can reconstitute this paint once it dries. So if I'm using the same color palette, I won't wash my palette for a while until I decide to switch up my colors. So just so you guys know, you don't have to wash your palettes every time you're done painting. That's too much cleaning. Who wants to do that? That is a lot of cleaning. So I have a little bit of my blue and I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of my violet to make a more true blue as opposed to a like turquoisey blue. Does that make sense? Yes. You said violet? What? You said violet? Yes. Really? So um, the colors that I'm using today, I just realized I didn't say what colors. We have lemon yellow. We have violet, we have sea blue, we have sepia, and we have black, and we have bleed proof white. So just all the colors that are in the subscription box. Okay, so I have my more blue sky. And I'm gonna start off, and I wanna work quickly here. So I do my color down first, and then I'm just gonna grab water and pull it down. And the reason why I'm grabbing water instead of more paint is because I want there to be a value change in the sky. That's how we kind of communicate depth and space is value. And you can see I'm overlapping my mountains here a little bit. I'm not stopping right at the line. And that's because I want to make sure that I don't have white spaces in between my sky and my mountain because that's not how it is in life. True. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that makes so much sense. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry. And actually, in my reference photo here, I actually have like a purpley tint a little bit more than this one, which I actually think is really lovely. So in order to try and get that again, I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple just to see if I can like, yeah, there we go. Really light purple. Yeah, just, just a little soft hint of purple. And again, this is your sky, it's your world you're creating. So if you don't like purpley skies, you don't have to put that in there. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry and while that dries, I'm gonna move on to another area. So I'm gonna go on my water. So this one, I'm gonna use mostly sea blue. Oh, that's black. Sea blue is down here. And I'm gonna start with my six going along this kind of shoreline that I've made here. So I'm going to start with the color kind of by closest to the tent is where I'm going to have my darker colors. And then I'm just going to kind of like start doing lines out here. And this is to remind me to leave white spaces because water is reflective, which means the sun glaring is going to leave, or moons do it too, is going to leave glares on our water, which would then the spaces would be white. So this is my first go. And then I'm just gonna grab water and using only water, I'm gonna move some of this color around. But I'm gonna remember to try and keep some white spaces. Now, if you don't keep white spaces, it's not the end of the world because we have bleed proof white. We can just put them back in. But I don't know, it's kind of nice to just try and remember to keep the spaces. It's a good challenge. Yeah. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some more sea blue and a tiny bit of that blue that I mix for the sky. And I'm gonna kind of put it down here because I also want a value change in the water. Again, that's how we communicate space. And if you don't know what value is, value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So um, this is a darker value here because it's dark. Here is a lighter value because it's lighter. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave that for a second. Let that dry for a minute before I add too much to it. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start, if your sky is dry enough, and hopefully at this point, uh, that's not dry yet. <laughs> How you can tell, and somebody who follows us taught me this trick, because I didn't know this, but it's a really good, is if it's glary, obviously it's still wet but if you put your wrist on it and it feels cold, it's still damp. Not damp enough that it would lift up paint, but damp enough that it's not totally dry. Oh, Isn't that a good oh, trick? That's a great trick. She, she said that to me and I like tried it and I was just like, oh my gosh, what a great little. That's like a secret pro tip. I know. It's like another level. Yeah, <laughs> I know. She is a pro, she's very talented. The woman who told me this, I think her name is, Char, I, I would assume short for Charlene or Charlotte, but I'm not sure. Um, so because this is wet and this is wet, sorry, that was my phone. Because this is wet and this is wet, I don't wanna do the mountains yet because that will bleed. I don't wanna do the brown part, the ground yet because that will bleed into my water. So I'm gonna do my tent because that's not touching anything. So I'm just gonna use sea blue for this and I'm gonna do a little line at the top, a little line at the bottom, and then I'm just gonna use water to spread. Okay, and then don't forget to paint the other side of your tent flap. That tent is one of my favorite colors. Isn't that a beautiful color? Hey, this almost looks like a snow scene. Like if I did like little gray uh -huh. here, it would look like snow camping. Dang, that'd be cool. Just a thought for you guys. Have you ever been snow camping? No. <laughs> Will I ever go snow camping? I'm gonna go ahead and say no. It is not fun. <laughs> Especially when it's like a slush ice <laughs> snow in Missouri. Not a good time. No. Okay, now I think that's dry enough. So I'm gonna mix green. I'm gonna grab some lemon yellow, some sea blue, and if this green, and what I did is I added a little bit of sepia to it to tone down the vibrancy of the green. A little desaturation trick. That's right. 
or if you have greens complement, which is like red or magenta, that would also do the trick. Okay, so I have a green and I'm gonna add water to it because in order to communicate space in um, landscapes, we use a technique called atmospheric perspective. And that means the farther something is away from us, the lighter in value it becomes and less contrasty it becomes. So if you look at my little sloping hills here, this is a light value, this is a medium value, and this is a dark value. And that is what makes this feel like these are in the distance. If these two hills were the same exact value as this first hill, it would feel really on top of each other, which is sometimes true in nature. It just depends on what you're trying to communicate to your viewer. So it's not like that's bad, because sometimes things are really close to each other. But if you're trying to communicate distance and depth, you want to make sure you have three different values. Okay, so I have my light green. I added water to it to get my lighter value. And I'm just gonna put that into my sky. Now, thankfully, my blue sky is light enough that it's not um, hindering the color of my mountain very much. Whereas if you put your sky in and it's super dark and you overlapped the lines, you might see some of your sky through your mountains. Um, what you can do if that is you is you then have to make your mountains darker to um, You have to like change your Values then so you have to have this This value match up and be slightly darker than your sky value and continue that in order for those things to be covered up Does that make sense? Yes Okay, yeah You are starting with the lighter of the mount mountains the hills. I am is it wrong or bad to start with the darker of the hills or mountains? It's not necessarily bad, but usually when you're doing landscape paintings where you want things to feel far away and have like a background and a midground and a foreground, it's much easier to convince the viewer if you start with the background first and work your way and the reason for that is because it matters how lines overlap with each other when you're painting something. Interesting. So because I put my sky first and then I put the mountain up on oh. top of the sky, that's true to what we would see. Interesting. Okay. And this mountain or hill is in front of this one. So does that totally make does sense. that make sense? So you I mean, kind of want to layer it yeah. how it is because simply the brush strokes informs gives our viewer information whether we know it or not right. okay that makes total sense however like it also depends on drawing time where like it made sense for me to do my background and then go to here then instead of like you know what i'm saying yep. so i i kind of play with that rule but generally um, especially with like hills and stuff you want to start with the back one first and work your way up i'm going to turn my phone on silent perfect because I'm a that's, professional. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> I know to turn my phones off during tutorials. It's not like I've been doing this for two and a half years. I noticed that you said phones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you want to wait for that to dry before you do your next layer. And of course, for the sake of time, I like to work on other areas while I'm waiting for an area to dry. So I'm actually going to do my brown ground. Not my hill, but just my, my brown. Okay. Brown ground. Brown ground. That's the technical term. It's a coffee brand now, we just decided. Brown? That's the next company we're going to start. Brown ground. <laughs> Look out for it. Look out. <laughs> Look out, world. <laughs> Look out, world. Ground brown is coming for you. <laughs> okay, so I have my sepia. I'm going to mix a tiny bit of green into it because this sepia is pretty red. Um, you can leave it as is, or if you want it to like feel like it transitions more into like a, the grassy hill, you can add some green. It's up to you, because this is your painting. And just kind of, I'm gonna start by putting color around my tent, and then rinse my brush, and just use water to kind of spread that. If, let's say you put that color down and you kind of pause a minute before spreading it and, the, and it's not spreading out like how you would want it to, just instead of using only water, um, grab some color on your brush. So I would just pick up more brown and spread that instead of just relying on the color that I initially laid down. 
Okay? Okay. So now I am going to do my second hill. So I'm going to grab a little bit more green. So you just want to make sure it's a darker value. Put that in. And I'm kind of overlapping so there's no white line in between. So if you want to change the angle of that tint, you just have to play with the shape of the triangle. Yes. The length of mm -hmm. its sides mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So if I were to have a tent that was more straight on instead of to the side, mm -hmm. like the front perspective, it would probably kind of look way like shorter actually due to the perspective. So that's it more like straight on. If you want to have it go like the other way, you would do your triangle and have it go that way. If you want it, it if you want your perspective that it's more to the side, then you would make this opening thinner and make the sides longer. Mm. And that looks like it's kind of more to the side. And then you can like totally commit all the way of just a side view. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. And there's also different, a bunch of different shaped tents. Like this is kind of more of an old school one, I would say. Tents aren't really that shape anymore, but it's the, we, we all know what's going on. I mean, at Scout Camp, there's still that shape, so. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so I did my green. Okay, now the next thing is the hill and the inside of the tent and a little bit more water. So um, this is still wet, so I don't wanna put in my hill yet. I just did my brown ground, so I'm gonna wait to do the inside of my tent. I'm gonna touch my water and just kind of like finish that off. I'm gonna do another run of blue and this time I'm going to mix a tiny bit of black in there and I'm going to switch to my round too because I want to kind of darken where it meets the shore. Usually water is darker where it's meeting the water line because the ground you can see the ground is um, like closer to the water's edge. Are we doing front face because I want to show them? Absolutely. Okay so if you think of water this is water and then if you think of the ground underneath water where it meets it's closer and then the ground does this right where the ground and the water meet it's going to be a darker value because you can see the ground through the water usually and then it kind of lightens up because that ground tends to go away so you just see water and then the water usually gets darker because it's just like so much water yeah. does that make sense yep. and usually the ground itself like the shoreline would, depending on the angle of how they meet, would be casting a shadow on the water anyway. So, this is a lot of information in this tutorial. A lot of good info. I didn't expect it to go this way, but hopefully that's okay. All Unless right. We're going to teach knots. <laughs> and now I'm going to show you how to actually set up a tent. <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> Okay, so I have my round two. I have a little bit of sea blue and black on it. So it's kind of like a navy. And I'm just gonna go back in here and just kind of darken up where this shoreline meets. And at this point, you can play with the angles and um, like you can change how this edge is, right? Like if I didn't like that that stuck out too much, I could just cover that up. Okay, and then I always like to just blend out a little bit so the transition is just a little bit smoother. But don't blend out so much that you lose your dark. Okay, ooh, that looks nice. It does look nice. And then I'm gonna do another layer of that more blue color back here. Just a little bit. Have you ever camped in a valley by a river? Mm, I don't think so. Well, actually, uh, no. It's about 10 to 15 degrees colder than it is on a hill. Oh, really? Yeah, so we had a camping trip when I was in Scouts when I was like 15 or 16, and we went down the hill. It was it was somewhere around 75 to 80 degrees out. It was around this time of year, mm -hmm. really nice time of camp. Mm -hmm. And we went down to where we were like, oh, this will be great. There's trees nearby. There's a little bit of body of water, you know, all that. Had a fire. It dropped to 32 degrees, <gasps> and it was still 50 degrees up the <laughs> So it was like 20 degrees. Oh, difference. my gosh. It was so cold. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was rough. <laughs> okay. 
You guys can choose how dark you want to make your water. I feel good about that. I'm going to let that dry before I do my white highlights. And now I'm going to go back and do my hill. So I'm going to make sure that my green is darker value than these two. And again, I'm going to throw a little bit of brown in there um, to kind of tone down the green. But if you want like a super vibrant green, this is your painting. You have every right to make it whatever colors you want. And then I'm just going to put in this hill. And it doesn't have to be a perfect line. It can kind of be a little bit wavy. Okay. And then I'm going to try and like blend it out to my, to the brown like dirt area. Because I don't want it to just like hard stop where I did the brown. And this is, so right here, you can see kind of how it's, with watercolor, it's a little bit tricky because I now have to work around the tent where like with acrylic or oil, you would most likely just keep painting and then put your tent on top of whatever you painted. But watercolor is transparent, so we don't always have that luxury. And then my reference photo, that's definitely like a darker brown. I probably just mix black with that sepia to get that dark brown. But I really like how this kind of, it kind of gives me a feel of the beach yeah. instead of dirt on this one. So I'm going to keep this one this light brown. I like that. I see what you mean by the layering of the, ba the background, mid-ground, foreground. Yeah, right? Like, because there's more of a hard line where the most recent one is. Yes, and if I were to do this one first and then try and do this one after, it just blend differently. Yeah, and then it it really is important to the vo the viewer that this edge literally goes on top of yeah. this line. Um, it just convinces our viewer more of what's happening. Okay. Gosh, that's just such a serene... I don't know, I love that. Okay, now I'm going to do the inside of my tent and it's funny because if you look at our night one, the inside of our tent is light, but that's because there's a light f within it. Uh, this one, it's dark because there's no light within it because it's daytime. daytime. You don't need a light within it. Nighttime when we're trying to get bugs. Yes. <laughs> in our tent. I didn't fully understand that until I lived out in Missouri and the amount of bugs that are on my windows oh. at nighttime because we have lights on in our house is insane. It's crazy. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do this using mostly black. I put a little bit of blue in there so um, to like color match, to like make this color story make sense a little bit. Because sometimes if you use just black, it has a gray tint to it. Where if this one, it will at least have like a little bit of a blue tint to it. Yeah. And we have a blue tint, so it makes sense. And I'm just going to go in using my round two. And just fill it in. And now using my bleed proof white, if you've never used bleed proof white before, which hopefully you have because we've done a couple tutorials already, but it's thicker so it doesn't feel the same as your liquid watercolors. If it seems dry, you can reconstitute it with water. You want to have enough water on your brush to make it a smooth line, but not so much water because if you do a lot of water, it no longer is opaque and it just kind of becomes more transparent. So you can, you can play with the level of transparency by how much water you use. And then I'm just going to go in with my round two and just kind of put in just some white lines. And if you want them to have like a wave feel, then you would just follow the shape of the shoreline. So it would be like this. Let me make it thicker. Oh. Neat. Now that now that looks like it's a wave kind of coming in what? a little bit more. And you can do one up here if you want, but no way. I absolutely would have not shaped it that way. Because it would follow the shape yeah. of the shoreline. That's how waves. Nope. Not in my brain. <laughs> that is not how it works. But it that is amazing. Or if you want it to seem like peaceful without like waves coming in, you would probably, you would just do kind of dashes of lines that are smaller 
closer up to here and then get bigger on their way out. And that's gonna make it feel like it's more still. That's cool. Make sure you rinse your brush really good after you use bleed proof white. Get all that white off of there. That's it. Nice. That's our postcard. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys take the time to do this. Um, I know it's, it's scary putting yourself out there. It's scary sending something from your heart to someone. It's a very vulnerable place to be, but um, and it takes a lot of courage. But I really believe that when we show courage, it's easier for other people to do it. When we show our vulnerabilities, it makes it okay for other people to be vulnerable. And that's how we make real connections in life, right? Agreed. So um, if you want to nominate someone for this, usually we actually all send it to the same person, but in honor for May and June for Mother's and Father's Day, I thought it'd be fun if I let you guys choose. But we have a nomination form on our website. Just go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom. There's going to be a nominate button for Let's Make Art Matter. Just click that, fill out the form, we're good to go. Um, and remember that as a community of artists, we have power to make change and make people feel loved. And that's the whole point of this, is it just kind of shows that um, we can just be together and recognize humans and be kind. And I think that there's a lot of goodness and power in that. So thank you guys so much for painting with me. I can't wait to see what you guys make. You can tag us on Instagram at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. You can post in our watercolor group, which is called let's make art watercolor. Um, thank you guys for painting with me. I hope you take the time to do this. Keenan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for making me feel really good about those ocean waves. You're welcome. <laughs> Just blew my mind. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.